Do you have a Teams Rooms on Windows and would like to add a custom background to it? Stay tuned for this week's episode of Moment Days. Welcome to this week's episode of Mo Mondays. In this week's episode, I am going to talk to you about how you can add a custom background to your Teams Rooms on Windows device. Now, note I said Teams Rooms on Windows and not Android. And unfortunately, it's not available on the Android platform. It is, however, available on Windows. Um, for the Android platform, it is on the roadmap. Um, so I know Microsoft are working on enabling custom backgrounds for, for Android, but it's not here yet. We're hoping it will come over the next few months or so. So um, as soon as that comes out, I'll let you guys know. But for now, it is available on Windows, and I'll show you exactly how you can do that um, and uh, add some custom backgrounds. So the first thing that we want to do is head over onto the Teams Rooms admin guide. So in pretty much every single episode of More Mondays, I've referred to this guide. It's learn.microsoft.com um, and then forward slash your language forward slash Microsoft Teams. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you head over onto that website, you should be given this web page across here. Now, hopefully you should be familiar with it by now. On the left hand side, you'll notice we have plan, deploy, manage, uh, and then underneath manage, we'll have feature management and then manage custom backgrounds. That's the one that we want to click and that will bring you across here. Now, Microsoft has added a whole bunch of information around adding custom backgrounds, what you should do, what you shouldn't do, and how you would go ahead uh, and install it as well. Unfortunately, there is no simple way to just, you know, upload a background into TAC um, and then push that down to a machine yet. Uh, I know the team's trying to work on it, um, but at the moment, we need to manually um, uh, add custom backgrounds. Um, so while you're on this page, Microsoft do give you a whole bunch of information on what's needed. The first thing that we need to know is the license that you're using. So Teams Rooms Pro, if you're using Teams Rooms Pro, then you're good. If you're using basic or anything below that, then you're not able to do it. So make sure um, you click on the admin guide uh, or sorry, the Teams Admin Center. So there's a link right here as well if you're an administrator to go ahead and check that. It's also worth noting the Teams Rooms version that you're using as well. So um, 4.17 onwards is the new graphical UI that we have. And then 4.16 um, and below is the old kind of Teams Rooms uh, kind of GUI that we have. So if you are using the older version, the 4.16 version, then you can only effectively use the standard backgrounds. And again, you can hit that tab. It gives you all the information. It's the front of room um, that you can change. And that's pretty much it. Um, but if you do have the latest versions uh, or the latest update 4.17 onwards, I think we're rocking 4.18 right now um, at the time of recording this. But if you are using 4.17 onwards, you should have the new GUI. Uh, so then you have what we call enhanced backgrounds. So slightly different from the standard backgrounds that we had with 4.16 and below. Um, but also on here, we allow you to, or Microsoft allows you to not only change the front of room display, but also your touch console. So that's the console that sits in the middle of the table, the one with the core controls. You have the ability to do that. Now, why do you want to change backgrounds? Um, so a lot of corporate customers naturally would want to have their logos uh, attached on. But we also have customers that have just newly deployed Teams Rooms and want to provide an easy way for their staff members to be able to start using the Teams Room system. So they create custom backgrounds with little arrows that say click here to join a meeting, click here to share content, etc. You can get quite creative on that. Now, when you are using the Teams Rooms admin guide across here, Microsoft do provide you with a whole bunch of information, things like recommended resolutions. So what are the resolutions of the image that you want to use, whether it's for the touch console or for the front of room display, and then also things like safe zones. So depending on the background that you use, Microsoft will give recommendations of, you know, the colors to use so that it's easy on the eyes and accessibility and those sort of things, but also where Microsoft will have things like the calendar showing or the button showing, uh, we kind of provide you with all like the safe zones. And you'll see it here on this screen of where exactly uh, are the icons placed on front of room, but also touch console as well. So you can make sure that your logos are not kind of um, hidden away by any icons or anything along those lines. Now, while you're on this web page, there's one really important uh, piece that you need to know. In fact, there's two two important ones. Now, if it's the first time that you're creating, you know, backgrounds, Microsoft do actually provide you with a background template. If you hit this link down here, the theme template, it will take you across onto this page, and you have the ability to download a .psd file, which is um, which you can open using Adobe Photoshop or even Paint.net uh, net if you wanted to. Um, 
So you can use the template if you want, or if you follow the guide, um, you can actually just create your own if you wanted to. Um, once you've created your background, so create your background, follow the instructions across here, create your background, and then save that as a JPEG. Um, then the next most important part is to make sure that you have the XML um, uh, uh, script or the snippet. Um, so in order for us to install wallpapers, it unfortunately not as simple as just uploading and then clicking a apply background button. We have to edit what we call the Skype XML file or Skype, system, uh, Skype settings XML file. The Skype settings XML file basically lets you change all sorts of different things by just changing some command lines in there. Uh, and again, to, in order for you to apply any backgrounds, we need to edit that. Uh, or we need to add that to the Skype settings.xml. And I'll show you exactly how to do that. So you'll see across here on the on the web page that Microsoft do provide exactly what's required. Now, if you have never messed about with Skype settings XML, don't worry. I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Now, um, the first thing that I would recommend for you to do is use the copy button across here, copy that into a text file. So on your desktop, right click, click new, and then text file and then paste this XML snippet into your into that text file. Now, you'll notice there's different colors across here as well. So where it's white that you see here on, on, on my screen, this is basically the name of your background. So, you know, for me, you know, a little tip, keep it simple. Don't name it anything that's overly complicated. Keep it nice and simple and short, and then it becomes easier for you to add it into the XML file. So like I said, copy this, add it into a text file and then save that, pop it on a USB stick um, along with the background and then hold on to that USB stick. Now what we're going to do is we're going to shoot straight over onto our uh, or my Teams Rooms device. So let me go ahead and share my screen, click window across here and go ahead and share. So you should now see on screen my MTR on Windows. On the right hand side of the screen, this screen across here, that is my front of room display. It's empty, it's a demo uh, tenant, so it's empty right now. And then here on the left-hand side, you'll see my touch console. And of course, as you know, I'm rocking the latest version of Windows, which means I've got the, the new uh, GUI uh, as well. First thing we wanna do is go ahead and hit the more button and then settings. Now make sure you have administrative privileges so you know the password. I'm gonna enter the password to get into it. You'll see I'm rocking 4.18 right now. I know the screen's a little small. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that for you in a second. So I'm just going to go Windows P and then go PC screen only. And then that will change the remote thing into single window. There we go. That's a little better. Um, so what we want to do is 4.18 is the one that I'm rocking. And literally, I just want to scroll down to Windows settings. As soon as you hit Windows settings, it will take a couple of seconds uh, and it will give you the option to choose the administrator login or to choose the Skype login. So I'm going to go ahead, hit administrator, enter my password again. It's three characters. I'm sure you guys have figured out what it is. I haven't changed the default password. And then you're, 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 you're basically on the desktop of your Microsoft Teams Rooms device. Now, that USB that I was talking about, it should contain your text file, and it should contain your image uh, or your background that you created. Just copy that onto the desktop, nice and simple. Here's one I done earlier. So I'm gonna go ahead and just show you, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm just gonna show you the background. Um, so it's this nice little simple background that I found with a cat and a bandana sitting on a bed. I don't know, it's something, whatever it's sitting on. Um, just, just to show you, you know, um, this is the background I wanna apply. Now remember that Skype XML um, file we were talking about. So here's that text file I made earlier on. And I, all I literally did is I copied um, uh, the Skype XML snippet from the Teams Rooms admin guide and added it onto here. The only change that you really need to do is change the name of the um, the image. So for, for me, my image, let me make that a little smaller. My image is called FOR background. That's how simple I kept it. So FOR background, obviously it's case sensitive as well. So I literally, I made it as easy as just clicking that, going copy, going across here to uh, where we need to add it and then just pasting it right in there. So it was FOR background.jpg. And you'll see when we look at the, um, when we look at the Skype XML uh, listing, you see custom background, main front of room display. So that's for the large screen on the outside. 
Then you've got custom background for extended front of rim displays if you're using like larger screens um, or, or, or dual displays. Um, and then custom background for the console, which is the touch console in the middle of the table. You can create different backgrounds if you're using 4.17 onwards, different backgrounds um, uh, for different displays. So one different one for the touch console, a different one for the front of room. Once you've done that, just save it, right? So file. Uh, and then save and leave it as that text file, and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, those are the two files that you need. Now what we need to do is navigate to the folder with the, where the Skype XML file is supposed to go. So I've just dropped down below exactly where we need to be. Let me hide that for a second and just open up my File Explorer. So Start button and then File Explorer, open that up. And then let me go ahead and just share that banner again one more time. So we've got C, Users, and Skype. So I'm going to go to this pc c users skype and then we're looking for app data now if it's the first time that you're doing it you will not see app data what you need to do is go to the top here in the file explorer click on view scroll down to the bottom to show and then enable hidden items and also enable the one above it file name extensions those two are super important make sure they're enabled if they're not enabled, you won't see app data. Now we're in app data. And then uh, inside app data, we're going to go to local and then packages across here and then Microsoft Skype Room System. So it's the only one that says Microsoft Skype Room Systems. And you're probably wondering why is it Microsoft Skype Room Systems? You know, it was all based around Skype Room Systems back in the day and engineering never really changed the back inside of it. So, so the naming convention still is Skype Room Systems. So we open up Skype Room Systems across there and then the final folder is local state. Open up local state and there you go. Um, so here's one I've done earlier. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that one. There we go, cool. Okay, so when you open up the local state folder, this is what you are given across here. The first thing that you want to do is that background. So my cute little cat that I've got, I'm going to drag into this folder across here. So that's there. And then the next thing I'm going to do is grab that text file that I created earlier and drag that into there as well. So I'm going to open up that text file one more time so you can see the contents. It is from the Teams Rooms admin guide. So we've got theming, custom theme, and then I've made sure I've changed it to my wallpaper across there. Now, once you have created that text file, the next thing we're gonna do is change it into an XML file. So you wanna right click across here, um, go down to show more options and then rename. And what we need to rename it to is Skype settings. Okay, so Skype settings, and then you can hit the enter button. now. It is case sensitive. And again, it's on the Teams Rooms admin guide. So Skype settings is what you want. And then I'm going to click that one more time and you'll see where I've got the dot text extension on the end of it. I'm going to change the dot text extension to XML, uh, hit the enter button. It will say, hey, do you want to change it? The answer is yes, we do. Uh, it will change the icon. We know it's one kilobyte because there's a bit of data. If it says zero kilobytes, it means you've got nothing in there. So, so, so make sure that's there. So two things to know, the background, Skype XML, uh, so Skype settings.xml is what you want to make sure that we have across there. And then as soon as you've done that, you want to reboot your machine. So literally hit the start button and go ahead, hit start, restart. Now it will take, it will take a couple of minutes for your machine to reboot. And the custom background will not apply until you have rebooted that machine. So uh, in the magic of this video, I'm going to pop back again in a second and you'll see the machine rebooted. So I'll be back in a second. With the magic of video editing, we are back after roughly around three minutes. Um, so the system has rebooted. Let me go ahead and share my screen one more time to show you. Ta -da! I now have a cute cat as my background. Um, so there you are, nice and easy to edit the Skype XML file, drop in your your custom background, and it should just pop up straight away. You'll notice why Microsoft um, say about the safe zones, because we wouldn't want the cat on the right-hand side. It will block up the calendar and vice versa. So this is pretty much um, um, spot on. Now, you do, of course, have the ability to be able to go back into settings if you want. Um, so let me type in the password there. Uh, and if I wanted to change the background to something else, um, I can go back to the standard backgrounds, 
or I can go back to that custom background across here if I wanted to. Uh, so there you have it, nice and easy. In order for you to change your Microsoft Teams rooms um, uh, on Windows uh, and have a nice custom background. So give it a bash. Uh, if you run into any issues, by all means, please do use the comments down below. Uh, let us know. And someone from the Microsoft team uh, or myself will be there to try and help support you. Uh, with that in mind, I just want to say thank you so much. Be sure to like, subscribe and comment down below. And no doubt I shall see you guys next week. Ciao.